In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to make a nice zero clearance insert like this with a lock for your table saw. This will specifically be for a DeWalt saw, although you may still enjoy the build if you have a different brand. As far as the DeWalt saws go, this should work for several different models. Mine is the DW7491. Let's get right into it. I'm going to start things off with a nice flat piece of 12 millimeter plywood, also known as half inch import, depending on where you're at. This piece needs to be 14 by three and seven eighths. Next, I'm gonna take the factory insert with all the hardware removed and attach it directly to this piece, making sure there's a little bit of plywood sticking out all the way around with number six half inch screws. These things are super short. They're really easy to spin out. I don't recommend a ratty tat. Just use a regular drill or even a screwdriver and just take it easy. Now I'm going to cut the excess off the ends with my scroll saw before I flush trim it on the router table. Now that I have all the excess trimmed off, I'm going to head over to the router table where I'll be using a dual bearing spiral upcut bit. I just carefully freehanded it across the opening there. On some of the other ones that I've made, I would take it off and recut it with a scroll saw, but I really don't think it's necessary. I was also notching out right here where the router bit left this little radius, and I don't think that's necessary either. I'll use the screw holes to index a 3 8 Forster bit, and the finger hole is a 3 quarter inch Forster bit. I'm going a quarter inch on the depth. Next, I'm going to use a 764 bit. This is the perfect size for tapping these little number eight bolts. I should probably use my drill press, but I'm just going to hold my drill as straight as possible. Now I'm going to use this little router bit to put a slight countersink on the back of all these holes. This helps keep the back of the hole from blowing out when tapping the threads. Tapping the threads is just a matter of running one of the bolts through the holes. It's a good idea to use a pair of pliers here, not only to keep the bolt straight, but also the bolt's going to start to get pretty hot after you tap one or two of these things. Here I'm going to transfer the height on these ears and I'm going to carve the top of them off with an Oscar. Usually when you buy cabinet hardware like pools and handles, they'll give you some extra bolts so that you have some options when mounting. The short ones are for doors and the long ones are for drawer boxes. So if you've installed any kind of hardware like this, there's a good chance that you already have some of these bolts. just flush right real close to being flush with the surface okay now we're off to the off to see the wizard take any of the sharp edges off there's this thing when you push the blade all the way up that hits right here and on the factory throat plate it has this part notched out transfer that over and i'm running a little bit big over here at the the other router table and i've got a 3 8 cove bit in here and that seemed to work really nicely to notch that out it's a little less than an eighth on the top there Now I'm going to go ahead and put a lock on this thing and I'm going to show you a couple of different ways I've done this. One way is to just take the lock off the factory insert. If you don't mind the factory insert being lockless, this works pretty well. And it's just a matter of drilling a 1 and 3 16 hole almost all the way through it and then whittling out this little curve shaped slot on the back. A better way to do it would be to add your own locking mechanism. This one's pretty simple. 
This area seats the tab on the back of the saw, and then this pulls forward and locks underneath the tab. And the idea is this is done from above, so you just hook onto the screw head, pull it forward like that. Super simple, very effective. These are all the parts that make up the lock. I started off with a rip that is a heavy quarter by five eighths. It needs to be at least six inches long so you can get two two inches and one inch and a half. I've also got a small piece of quarter inch plywood that's been cut inch and a half by two. One of the short cabinet bolts. I'm gonna use the same four screws from before plus one extra. Now I'm gonna put a center mark on the insert and a center mark on the small piece. All right, I'm gonna sandwich the small piece with the two two inch pieces. Draw this contour around. You could cut this off with a miter saw if you wanted to. I'm also going to uh, mark out where I'm gonna countersink and pre-drill for the half inch screws. And I will also mark this plywood out a little bit. Put a little curve on the front of it. I'm going to measure here for the beginning and the end of a 5 30 second slot. It's going to start at 13 sixteenths and it's going to end at an inch and 7 sixteenths. Now that's the outside edge so I'm going to drill two holes. One will be there and one will be here and then I'll connect those two holes with the scroll saw. Here I'm making a channel with the drill press so that this bolt head sits just below the surface. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and mount these. The tab itself is 5 eighths of an inch, so as long as you've got a little bit of extra play in there, that's all you really need. So that looks pretty good. All right, I'm just going to countersink one screw back here, and that's going to do it. The screw is sticking out just a little tiny bit, so I'm going to hit it with a sander. All right, now it slides nice and smoothly. I'm going to slide it flush to the front of the insert and flip it over. And now I'm going to drill a 7 64ths hole so that we can tap that one inch bolt right here to the far end of the slot. Oh wow, look at that. Hey, no tools required. Here's four other zero clearance inserts that I've made for this table saw. And I was about to put the same lock on the rest of them when I realized there's a little bit of an issue that keeps it from being the perfect one size fits all lock that I thought it was going to be. The lock's gonna work fine, it just has to be modified a little bit. This is an insert that I've made for using a 10 inch blade and I've cut all the way through it to the full height of three and a quarter inches. And when I put the parts on here, you can see what the issue is going to be. So when you raise the blade up, up to the three, three and a quarter, it's going to cut into this piece. It's probably going to cut into the screw. It's going to cut into the plywood. It just needs to be skinnier to work. So here is a skinnier version of the lock. And this one, the sides have been replaced with uh, 5 sixteenths sides rather than the 5 eighths. And the piece of plywood is now an inch and 3 sixteenths wide rather than the inch and a half. And that is going to give us the clearance we need. So no matter what size blade you've got in there.
Everything else is pretty much the same.